Are you an investigative professional? Did you know you can find the best private investigator resources using investigatorstoolbox.com? This resource community was built exclusively for licensed investigators and investigative professionals. You can network directly with members, educate yourself through free webinars and blogs, and even create your own customizable research library. Membership starts for as little as 49 cents a day. Download the Investigators Toolbox app or visit our webpage at www.investigators-toolbox.com. Want full data access without a site inspection? IRB Search gives you full social security numbers, dates of birth, up-to-date contact info, and so much more without the inconvenience or cost of an inspection. As an added bonus, you can access IRB data on any device in any location. You'll always have the best data anytime, anywhere. Visit irbsearch.com and use exclusive promo code PIPOD2021 for a free trial and 100 credits. Offer available for new and returning customers. Is a good case management system keeping you from taking your business to the next level? Crosstracks is the premier case management system for the investigative community. They're the only SOC 2 certified case management software available. Visit Crosstracks.com, tell them you're a listener, and save even more. Get a plan in place for the new year to grow your business to the next level. Welcome to PI Perspectives. Today we welcome back certified fraud examiner and private investigator Leah Weeholter. Leah is releasing an incredible book this week called Data Sleuth. She joins us today to talk about how you can become a data sleuth and how you can use some great research methods on any type of investigative work. Please welcome Leah Weeholter and your host, private investigator, Matt Spare. And welcome everybody to this week's episode of PI Perspectives. This is Matt Spare, your host. Today, I am honored and really excited uh, to have Leah Weeholter back on the program. Leah, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Matt. Yeah, you are a uh, certified fraud examiner, extraordinaire, uh, workman forensics, entrepreneur, the investigation yeah. game. We, we're cut from the same cloth. So uh, what, what have you been up to? Oh my gosh. So many things. Um, yeah. So last year, I and I think we're going to talk about it, but uh, so I won't get into it right now. But last year, I had the opportunity to write a book with Wiley Publishers, um, about our data sleuth process that we use here at Workman to work forensic accounting and financial investigations. And, uh, after, and that happened like really quick and, uh, way quicker than I had planned. Right. And so I'm sitting at dinner one evening with my husband and I said, Hey, this is kind of crazy, but what if I also sat for the CPA exam? And he was like, it's crazy, but I mean, we have some time. And I, so last year I took, and I studied and took the CPA exam and passed it and, and also wrote a book in the same year. And at the same time, just because I think this is kind of interesting, I, I would be, you know, being a private investigator, I'm also interested in this. Right. Um, I'm a big escape room fan. And so also in the middle of all of this going on last year, you know, working cases and, and everything, my husband and I decided to put in an escape room in downtown Tulsa, right next door to my office. So that is like a month away from being opened and it's just so cool. Like so many of my dreams just coming to life in a very short amount of time. So it's a little overwhelming. So I'm super tired, but right. it's also really great at the same time. Oh, sleep is for the week. Oh gosh. I do sleep. Yeah. I do sleep. People do ask me, how do you get all this stuff done? I yeah. do sleep. I sleep. I make sure I get sleep. Yeah. I may not do fun, other quote unquote fun things, but like I sleep. So yeah. that's how I get it done. Listen, the older you get, the, the, the less that other stuff matters. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> I think it's really important. Like you can look forward to it. I think I'm good uh, with like five or six hours. You know, you can see the bags in my eyes. I definitely did about five hours last night. So, oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's the life we live. Uh, it, yeah. As a small business entrepreneur and, uh, you know, someone who's, who likes to do a lot of stuff. That's why, um, we're kindred spirits because we really have the, the same, uh, drive to do things. And, uh, it, I'm so excited for you. This is really awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. 
I was really pumped today because, um, so I have a creative team on staff here at Workman because of all the crazy things we do. So I have a graphic designer on staff and they finalized the logo for the escape room today and put our site up. And I just, I was like, this is perfect. This is exactly what I had pictured. I can't draw to save my life. So it just makes me so happy to see what I've communicated to somebody like coming right. alive. And I'm like, yes, this is it. This is yeah. it. So yeah. Some people that are good at doing that stuff is it, pretty amazing. I know uh, yeah. when we did the uh, first concept for investigators toolbox and just, you know, that feel, um, you know, that was my brainchild of, of what I wanted it to look like, but I can't right. design any of that stuff. So a buddy of mine who I actually went to high school with, who's super talented and, and has like really big contracts with like, you know, IBM, Coles, Michaels, all those guys. Oh, wow. He's like, yeah, um, we're going to, yeah, we're going to do it this way and all that. And I was like, perfect. This is awesome. And uh, that's how that came about. So yeah, I'm with you surround yourself with good people. <laughs> yeah. It, it's like really humbling too, because you know, there are so many things that I think, oh, I can just do that. But whenever you're bringing, whenever I'm bringing a new idea to life, I'm like, I can't draw. So I can't set up a Facebook page. So I can't set up, but like, there's so many things that I'm like really dependent on other people, but it's super humbling. And then I don't know. I just think it's fun because then I get to work with other people, great people. And then they, they make it so much better than if I had tried to do it myself. Yeah. I find even like when I write music, I have a music partner, right? So I'm really good with chord structure and putting things together. Melodies I'm and in my head, they're like, they drive me crazy, but I can't sing them. I can't articulate. So it's like, oh, I'll start wow, to do yeah. it and he'll grab it and he'll run with it. And I'm just like, yes, that's exactly what's in my head right now. Yes. Um, yeah. So re- real funny is a quick side note. Um, we, I was at Intelnet and there was a hospitality suite going around. So I started banging on a piano there just for fun. And, uh, you know, all of a sudden I'm like, I think I got something here. So I put my recorder on, recorded it, sent it to my writing partner. And we pretty much wrote a song this morning based on, on, uh, oh my gosh. you telling that thing. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty psyched about that. That's so fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You never know. It's just weird, weird things. Um, um, but Hey, back to business, back to you. And right. You know, right. About right. Me. <laughs> right. Well, so, and you know, private investigator stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We'll keep, we'll, we'll keep it on, on subject today. Um, so that, that's really cool, uh, that, that you got all this stuff and, you know, you've done your podcast too. So the investigation game is, is your podcast Mm -hmm. and uh, you've been highlighting the the book that's coming out as well, uh, on the podcast, which is pretty neat because you're getting kind of a sneak peek and I love how you, you've brought your team in and you guys are talking about it together, which is really, really neat. Yeah, that's been a lot of fun. And um, to like hope, like my goal with this was to give people a sneak peek, peek of like, what are you buying with yeah, this yeah. book? Right. Um, but then also because, <clears throat> so the data sleuth concept itself is something that we created. Like Workman Forensics owns the trademark to this idea of data sleuth. Mm-hmm. And it is using, it is what the book title says, like using data in forensic accounting engagements and fraud investigations and um, in the book, I kind of, I, I really address a lot of different problems because I've had to wear every hat over the last 15 years, 16 years of my career. I've worn every hat. I've been the data entry intern at the FBI. And then I have had to be the analyst, but then also the business owner and the entrepreneur and the testifying expert, like all of these things. And so... Um, through the podcast episodes, I've been wanting to really highlight some of those different sections and how I solved different problems with my team to address like one person really can't do all of this in a sustainable way for like their entire career. I mean, I can't. I, and uh, I'm with you. I, I think there are a few people who have been able to figure that out. I always tell Tracy Conan, and she's if if you don't follow her on LinkedIn, you should. But I mean, she is just a forensic accounting guru expert. Yeah everything. And she is able to have worked by herself for all these years. But I got to tell you, I mean, at a couple years of doing that, I thought I can't, I can't be wear all of these hats yeah. and be great at all of these things yeah. for the rest of my career. Like, yeah. I, I mean, I'm right there with you, you know, and 
I, I've always like, I'm struggling to get, to get myself off the road, to get myself away from the computer and be the owner and not be the researcher. But, you know, when people bail on you or, or you got to let somebody go and now you're short staffed and, you know, it, it, it's such a challenge. I started this year off like just barnstorming. I was like, this is it. This is my year. Like, I'm really, I'm nailing it. Right. And then mm-hmm. the wheels fell off in March. <laughs> so it's like, okay, guess I'm going out and doing work. And, and, you know, the folks that are here with me still amazing. I mean, they're great people and they're the people you want to go to battle for and you, you, you die with. And, you know, it's like, you, you just got to bring in the other support staff to do it. And the bottom line is you can't do everything yourself. Uh, as much as you try, like you'll hit a point where you just never will grow. And um, yep. you work hard to build a brand and, you know, you want to cash in on that or, or, or reap the benefits. And you know, what, what does that look like reaping the benefits? Well, for me, spending more time with my family, <laughs> right? So that's the biggest benefit in the world for me. And, you know, it's just you know, having infrastructure set up that I'm, that I'm able to do that. Um, and your, your team's great. I mean, just, just hearing them, you know, just being so knowledgeable and so excited about it. And even like we've seen peaks of them through the investigation game going back years. I mean, like you've had your staff on, you talk about stuff and just listening to the excitement that they have when they're talking about cases or frauds or whatever. It's, it's fun. It's really cool stuff. Yeah. I am just so grateful for my team and each of them bring such unique gifts and talents to the table that like, I can't, I mean, obviously I understand the concepts because I've kind of had to develop this process over the years, but to just the depth and the excellence that they've brought to each part of the process is so encouraging. And this year we, like, I try to choose a word of the year to kind of set the vision or tone and to help us make decisions because I got plenty of ideas up in this head. So I need something to kind of like rein me in every year. And so last year, um, the word was invest. So that's, so Rachel, who's been on the podcast lately on the investigation game podcast with me, she became a certified fraud examiner. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've, she has a couple degrees in geology, and we've now converted her to this investigation and, you know, fraud examiner, which is awesome. Um, another team member is studying for another credential in financial forensics. And then I took the CPA exam, wrote the book. So we've been right. intentionally investing. That's what we did in 2021, right. 2022. It was, it's all about like upgrading or leveling up. So to me, that means I'm not creating anything new in 2022, it's all about what do we have in front of us and how do we make it better? And so by dissecting in just these 30 minute episodes with Rachel, it's given us more ideas of, oh, we could improve our processes this way. Um, Even though we're like just trying to share the basic process with our listeners or anybody who wants to learn more about it, it's helped us really like just go deeper and, and make it even better. So my, my buzzword, my keyword, um, for, for this year is methodology, which, Oh, I like it. Yeah. It just, it touches on that. Right. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not, um, the tool that you use to, to do it. It's not the shiny red toy out there. That's going to get you what you need. It's that process behind how you got there. And I'm, I'm training a researcher right now in house and it, it, it's great for me. Like I, I love it because of the questions and it's making things fresh for me again, remembering how to do things and doing all that. And what I keep telling this person is, it, you know, keep track of all the research that you're doing, you know, work off of a, a, a list, you know, do this, do that, do that. You know, this is our, our assignment and this is, you know, what our goal is, how do we get there and keep in track. And it's, it's hard because sometimes the data will take you in different directions, right? It's going to show you something. It's like, okay, do I keep, do I go down that rabbit hole? Or do I focus on what they actually hired me for? And that's a slippery slope. And I can only imagine, you know, when you start talking about numbers and, and uh, looking at accounting, like you're going to get that stuff all the time. And it's like, how do you stay focused on the job at hand and not go down that road and and go after that stuff um, if you don't have to, or when do you do that? Because it's like, okay, this is a thread I need to pull on. Right. So um, the book is great because it, it, it helps you with that process of what you need to do, right? Yeah. You know, it, it's interesting as we've started talking about 
the data sleuth process over the last year. And because I kind of tested it out um, in different ways over the last couple of years, especially before I wrote the book. And then now that we have the book, we've been doing some trainings and it's been really interesting to see um, different professionals perspectives on what data sleuth should look like, which is funny because like we made it up, um, you know, <laughs> well, <tell laughs> and, like people have these opinions about that's not what you said this training was about. I'm like, I right. literally said it was about our data sleuth process. So right, I don't right. know. Anyway, um, but it's been interesting because I think that there's this misconception in um, kind of, so data sleuth was created, that term was created to describe what we do at Workman Forensics. That's where it came from right. because like we're not we're not traditional private investigators but we're also not traditional accountants either and it's and or even forensic accountants it's like the merging and we're at the this intersection and so we needed something to describe what we were doing which is where we came up with the term data sleuth and started running with that but there's this idea that oh if we're working with financial data we should be able just to like program some stuff um, you know, automate or machine learning or, you know, all of these things, we should just be able to program a machine to tell us where the fraud is. Right. And I like to say this, my, I grew up, um, my family would show horses like as a hobby and we did it with my grandma and she would just say, oh my gosh, they have a push button horse. And, um, and so I use that a lot to describe what the reality of financial investigations are. It's not a push button horse. Mm -hmm. We have to use, like it is to me, investigations are so powerful because it solves problems. It's not about hitting a button and then a machine telling me, oh, fraud happened here. It's about harnessing, understanding where our data comes from. How can I use data analytics to identif identify some flags? But then at the end of the day, I still have to be the investigator to track down, is this actually fraud or is it just an anomaly? Right. It may not be fraud. There are elements that have to be proven for it to be fraud. Sure. And then, yeah. And then the other part of our process, not only just the data analytics part, which is what a lot of people want to talk about, but I think actually the secret sauce is our case planning because of the thing you were actually talking about before, how do you know which thread to pull and, you know, or rabbit trail to go down that would create value for the client? And how much of that is just my natural curiosity because I'm an investigator. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. um, the case planning is what really sets the tone for the investigation. Here are the concerns of the client. And if I think that, okay, this looks strange, I think I could do some preliminary research to see, is this really fraud? Is this really, you know, is money really missing here? But if it's not going to address the concerns of my client, I need to go back kind of like on a construction job. You're going to go back with a change order. I need right. to go back to the client and say, Hey, I know these were your concerns, but this is what I'm seeing. Is this normal or should, do you want us to go down this path and then update the plan from there? Yeah. But yeah, this whole process from how we, bring in a client, how we manage that client relationship, how much do we involve a client in the investigation, right. creating that case plan, communication with the client, and then using our data analysis. Data analysis doesn't even come into right. play in my book till like chapter seven or eight, because there's so much other, you know, so many other things that need to be addressed before we can, we really need to understand what we're looking at. Otherwise, it's, it's just a mess. Then we're yeah. just going off of like this gut instinct. And then back to your point and like methodology, how do we then train a team? Because then if I'm just going based off of my gut, I have 15 years of very intense experience where I didn't even have hobbies for a long time. So I'm now very good. I mean, you apparently right. like escape rooms now. So. Well, yeah. I and mean, I did that. Really do now. <laughs> a few years ago, I started adding hobbies in to like help yeah. with my stress level. But what I'm saying is like, I'm really, really good at financial investigations. Like I'm very, very good. I got so good at one point and I, I'm really not trying to brag on myself. I'm trying to prove a point. Uh, we're going to edit it out anyways. Don't worry. Do what? We're going to edit it on it anyways. So we're okay. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> um, yeah. Just edit that part out. But it got to a point where I was so efficient 
with investigations that I worked a $3 million embezzlement and my total fees were less than $10,000. And the guy was prosecuted, put in prison, assets were seized, the whole nine yards. And I thought, this is a really great skill to have, but this is not going to help stay in business. You know, like, how do I do this? But then (laughs) also, so, but with that level of intensity, I also was very close to burnout. So if I didn't figure out how to take what I was doing and what I knew about financial investigations and put it into a process or be, you know, if I couldn't share or explain the methodology, I wasn't going to do what I think I was made to do, you know, like, like it was just going to end and I would probably just go work a corporate job somewhere. Yeah, And and the thing is like, as you start getting traction like that and you've, you've solved this big case and you've got publicity and you've got all that, like that, just, you're going to get more and more work, you know? And it's like you putting that same level there. It, it's not s- sustainable if you don't have no. people with you. Right. And uh, that is a super important thing to do. And uh, now you're, you got a book out where you're creating an army of, of uh, people that uh, know, know right. what you're doing, which is, which is great. Um, so we're going to actually jump out and take a, a break r- real quick. But when I, you know, when we come back here, I want to really, dig in more to the book and, and just, um, you know, understand more about, uh, what it's about and, uh, and, and the passion behind it. Cause you, no one can ever accuse you of, of, of not being passionate about things. So yeah, guilty, um, <laughs> guilty as charged. Right. So everybody sit tight and we'll be right back. Are you a member of NCISS? Do you know what this great organization does? The National Council of Investigation and Security Services was formed in 1975 to keep a watchful eye on legislation that affects our industry. Now more than ever, there are data privacy and DMV issues popping up all over the country. Consider joining and supporting this much-needed watchdog for our industry. Learn more at NCISS.org. Looking for an insurance agent that puts you first? Every PI business is different. That's why OREP Insurance can shop multiple markets to ensure you get the best coverage to meet your unique business needs. OREP's model is business by the golden rule, and for over 20 years, they've built their business by putting their clients first. So come enjoy a fast online application and same-day certificates of insurance at OREP.org. OREP has coverage for armed investigators, executive protection, and even has a separate policy for security firms. The application takes less than five minutes, so visit OREP.org today. OREP.org. In 2019, Investigation Education Consultants added a new affiliate in its never-ending quest to provide quality professional investigative training. IEC is now offering certificate courses and investigative training online. Our website, IECOIT.com, will soon offer a certificate in professional investigation for those interested in entering the investigative field. There'll be standalone investigation classes for those seeking continuing education credits, CEUs, or just interested in taking classes for their own personal or professional interests. The classes currently available are Foundations of Investigation, Legal Investigation, Criminal Investigation, Fraud Investigation, Background Investigation, Interviews and Statements, Skip Tracing Locates, Ethics, and Report Writing. Investigator Toolbox members will receive a 20% discount off the listed price. So visit IECOIT.com. Check out the latest issue of PI Magazine, available online or via hard copy. Visit PIMagazine.com to learn more. And welcome back to PI Perspectives. This is Matt Sperry, your host. Uh, today we are here with the very passionate and very energetic <laughs> Leah Weedholder. Leah, welcome back to the program. Yes, thanks. Okay. Glad to be here. All right, we had we had to wind it down, a, a, t- take a little break, just to cool off a bit because we're, right. we're getting too wound up in uh, in our discussion here. Um, but man, I, it, I can I can see it. I, I can see it in, in how you talk about it. I can see in the teachings that you've done. Uh, you gave a great video for Investigators Toolbox um, that's exclusive uh, to the membership. So if you're a member of the Toolbox, definitely go in and check it out. Um, you know, you can just see your, your love for what you do. And, um, 
you know, how you're good at it. And it's, it's so great that you're, you're sharing that with everybody because that's something that's, um, you know, seven or eight years, maybe folks have been doing it you know, prior to that. It's like secret sauce. No, no, you can't, I'm not going to tell you how I do this stuff. You're going to, you know, take stuff money off the table for me. Why would I do that? That's idiotic. Right. And, and there, that old culture needed to change. And, um, you know, folks like you that are doing this stuff, um, you know, and getting the word out on these things, it's so important, right? Yeah. It, I struggled with sharing, um, because my career started with the FBI in this, you know, I, I mean, I was entering data on multi-million dollar pump and dump schemes and all this stuff, just entering bank statements into Excel, digitizing that information. And so I had a great mentor at the bureau and the agents were so great to just answer any questions that I had. And so I have this really unique experience. So once I started putting this business together, that's what I used as my like value add and my differentiation and all of that right. uh, to, to getting these clients. And so to think about studying, what did I learn since a lot of it was so self-taught, like, what am I actually doing? Taking a step back and looking at that so that I could share it was not something that came naturally because I, I felt like, but I've earned this. Why would I want to share this with other people? Right. Um, but once I, once I got to the point where I could start sharing that information, it's been so life-giving. Yeah. And then at the same time, it allowed me to have even more ideas and new ideas. Cause there's like this fear that, oh my gosh, I'm going to give away my secret sauce and I'm never going to have another idea for a secret sauce, yeah. but that's not the way it works. And so, um, what if you just, I, I'm pickles, really glad right? I gave it away. <laughs> just add I'm sorry. <laughs> just add pickles. That'll change everything. <laughs> <laughs> right. There you go. Um, it, it, you know, it's, it's, so interesting that you say that, right? Because there is that fear of, of, of that. And that's real, you know, it's totally real, but also like understanding that the more minds that are looking at this, the more sets of eyes, the more um, discussions that you have, like there are people that are smarter than us <laughs> that are out there. Uh, there are people that probably are more organized than us, if that's even possible. Um, but there, there are people that look at, at things a different way. You know, and, and even the people that aren't smarter and the, even people that aren't as organized, they're going to have their own perspective on doing things. And the discussion is what's key because it will spur your own mind, right? It will keep you fresh and it will uh, help you come up with new ideas. Uh, and maybe, you know, Rachel sees something a little bit differently than you do and says, hey, we, maybe we should consider this or, or maybe we take it down that pathway and you're like oh i didn't think of that right so that's the benefits behind all this for sure yeah it's created this really cool um like just sharing information and setting up this process has just created a really unique set of skills on our team and um with other professionals around the country uh, i started a professional collaborative of some of the people we were the closest with in our like LinkedIn community. Right. And so that we could work together if there was something on a case or whatever that we needed to, to bounce around or even like overflow for work with forensics, you know, if, if we were full and we just needed some help and that's just been great too, because it, it, it but if I'm looking at it from more of like a, I mean, I'll just label it like a scarcity. I'm never going to have another idea mindset. Right. Then I'm essentially giving my quote unquote competitors access to my secrets, but instead it's just expanded our yeah. knowledge and ability and reach. And then we can just serve clients better and we can serve more clients. And how about we just raise the level of the industry, right? How about we just, right. <laughs> you know, right? Like, how about we just make everybody better at what they do? I mean, I'm, I'm pretty confident that I'm not going to lose clients. Like, you know, I, I've, I've been around for a while. I kind of do my work. I'm known for doing it. Like I'll share whatever with you because I know even if you call on my clients, they're not going to leave me. Right. Because right. You, you've got that comfort level and that expectation. And, and I've been in situations where, 
it, big clients have brought in other investigators and you know, these were law firms I did business with 10, 12, 15 years. And you see them come and go, <laughs> you're like, oh, so-and-so is going to be doing work with us. Okay, nice to meet you. If you need help, blah, 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 you know, I'll help you out and, and, and this and that. And uh, what happened to so-and-so? Eh, they, they don't do the job that you do. We, <laughs> we're used to that. We, they're gone. Okay. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, but that whole passion, uh, you know, and, and there are a bunch of us, right, that, that really do it. And I think folks like Cynthia Hetherington, you know, kind of led the way on that, you know, and helped change the culture uh, of doing that. I think webinars and the um, ability to access training easy kind of help that as well, right? Because now you have access to training all over the world, essentially, uh, to people that do different things. So what's the point of holding everything to yourself? Um, I think legacy is really important uh, to me anyways, you know, like what I want to be remembered for when I'm not doing this anymore is, you know, the guy that, that, that bridged people, you know, that, that mm -hmm. got people together or, or taught people how to do things like that's important to me. You know, I, I don't want to just be, you know, Matt doing business in New York or whatever, you know, I, I, I decided that I wanted to, you know, kind of push forward and, and this whole idea of just helping the industry elevate to where it's at, like became a real passion project for me. And, um, yep. Yeah, you're the same way, you know, it's like, just want to make people better at what they're doing. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the chapters in the book, I just kind of, okay. Total transparency. I needed another chapter. I had a minimum <laughs> word <laughs> count. I had to hit those darn but publishers. <laughs> I know. And it was a lot more than I had originally thought. Right. So, but um, I decided to like carve out this chapter that talks about the future of data sleuth and what I, you know, I, I just challenged myself to like dream big about it right. and then write it down, even as crazy as it sounded. And it was in that chapter that I realized, yes, forensic accountants or data analysts are usually, or financial analysts are usually the people who have done these types of investigations, but using this process and understanding three basic kinds of data sources, bank statements, credit card statements, and payroll documents, more investigators could actually help people solve problems in that, you know, and find missing money if they just understood those three things. And it was in that chapter that I realized you don't have to be an accountant to do this. You can be a private investigator who's not afraid of numbers, right? I think there's still a bunch of people who just don't even want to mess with numbers. But if you're a private investigator and you're not afraid of numbers, here's how you go and you find this loss and this missing money for your client. Yeah. Now, maybe you don't want to testify to it or some of the other things that come after it, but investigation is problem solving. Yeah. And so if you just know where to go look to find missing money. And you have a few tools to help you look at this information. Right. I mean, I really think anyone can do this. Yeah, I you really know, do. You know, it's a really good way to, to get over that fear of numbers or dealing with numbers. What? Start a business. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Open QuickBooks. <laughs> you know, understand right. what a profit and loss sheet is, you know, and accounts receivable. You'll get really good at numbers very quickly. Or even <laughs> just a bank statement. Yeah, like if you just yeah. can open up a bank statement and start understanding what it's telling you. Yeah. Like you're good. You're good. Yeah. You go leaps and bounds. That's the uh, foundation for all of it. It's not as scary as it seems. Yeah. You know, it's funny in, in school, like I wasn't the best math student. I wasn't the best English student, but man, I'm pretty good at both of those now <laughs> between right. running, running businesses and writing reports every day. Yeah. You get better at it. Uh, and even writing, you know, like you write a book, that's uh, that's a challenge. You got to be uh, kind of got to be good at English, even though you got the the publishers or proofreaders or whatever the red lines, right? Yeah. Um, I I remember I wrote uh, I wrote an article for Psychology Today. It was like a, a a really great opportunity, right? Talk about it to me. It was like the stress of taking photographs in in a situation where somebody had was injured, and I was like photographing them, and it was it was really stressful. So they wanted to have me write about that. Right. And I wrote this, I thought was like a really good article and I submitted it in and they were like, eh, could be better. And I was like, really? I'm like kind of insulted. They're like, no, like you like give a, you know, 
give it more, right? So I mm -hmm. knew somebody uh, who I'd met at a Society of Professional Investigators event who was actually like a journalist. Like she interviews serial killers and wrote books about it. Like she really, Nancy Rollman, her name, and she's great, she's a good friend. And I was like, hey, can you take a look at this? And she helped me punch it up a little. And you know, they, they were like obvious things, expand on this, do and not just give me some suggestions. And I resubmitted it. And then they, again, they were like, eh. and I'm like, no, 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 Nancy helped me on this. And Nancy says it's good. So this is there you work. go. And it, they put it through. <laughs> put oh, it that's through. awesome. So, yeah. It's so always yeah. knowing somebody too is, is helpful. <laughs> For sure. And, you know, I have quite a few authors that have been on the podcast and one of them being John Kerry Rue, you know, who broke the Theranos scandal right. with Elizabeth yeah. Holmes and just the way that he writes his book is phenomenal. And so the whole time I was writing this book, I'm like, Oh my gosh, like, this like, is not my skill set. Yeah. Uh, like, who do I think I am? <laughs> right. But right. It, I was telling Rachel the other day that when I was writing a bunch of the, every chapter has at least one or two case stories. And as I would kind of write those, I would just tell myself, okay, you're just going to slow down. And you're going to remember back to this case and you're going to like feel it again, you know, right. because you have a word count, but also that's what makes it more interesting and try to like bring people into that struggle of the case. So I, I got there, I think, I think I got yeah. there, but um, yeah, it's definitely a challenge. That word count is real. I mean, I, I do writing for PI magazine, like every issue. And it, it's like, you, you always look at the bottom. Okay. All right. How many words do I have? <laughs> I'm, I'm always supposed to have When is enough enough or, or, you know, I feel like I could go on more. Like I got to wrap it up here. Cause I'm at that point too. I can't expect somebody to read five pages of, you know, what I got to say. It's not that important. <laughs> right? right. So, right. I can only imagine books. Somebody actually, somebody asked me, they're like, hey, would you ever write a book? And to me, it's like, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I've written enough articles that I probably have a book together. I just, I don't know. I, I, I see myself, I give you a lot of credit. Like I see myself pulled in so many different directions. I don't think it's my time yet to do that. Um, but see, you had a great idea. Like having that methodology and, and, and that whole data sort of thing, like that's real. Like people can can read that and it's useful. It's, it's, it's going to make them better at what they do. Me, like, what am I going to talk about? Yeah, there, I, there, I have a couple of areas that maybe I could specialize in personal injury stuff, but it's limited. Yeah, I had this conversation with Kelly Riddle. Kelly's written like 14 books. And I'm like, do I do this? I, now, right? You know, I, whenever I sat down to write the first chapter that the publisher was going to review before deciding if I needed like a writing tutor to join me yeah, and right. so they test you out at first mm -hmm. and i thought oh my gosh this is going to be so great like i just have to write a few more of these but then i thought i gave them all my good stuff in that first chapter in that first <laughs> chapter i submitted like how can i explain this more right. you know because to right. me i thought this is going to get really redundant yeah. um but and so much of my life is not about just like sitting still and kind of you know diving in and remembering and yeah. And like, it was just a total change of pace. So it was extremely yeah. difficult and I don't want to turn around and write another one anytime soon, but, um, but it, it, it made me think through the process more. It made yeah. me think through and have additional ideas. Sure. It also gave me an opportunity to put words and like name different processes and analyses. And as part of this, we ended up even creating like a landing page where people can download different templates and stuff, to, like a case planning template and a fraud detection worksheet. And, fantastic. and so, yeah. um, and there's a couple case stories that people can even practice. Um, you know, we had to throw in like our game type of stuff. Of course in you there. do. We had to have a case story set up and activities. Who they're to talking to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. So, There's probably um, a coupon for the escape room too. <laughs> uh, well, if only, if only. Um, <laughs> It'll be there. But, yeah. <laughs> That's great. You know, uh, you know, Scott Fulmer is another guy that I can think mm -hmm. of, uh, of writing. And, you know, John Hoda is another guy like John, he doesn't even like write about how to stuff. He's, he's just completely, you know, detective stories. That's his thing. And it's, uh, he, I, I was speaking to John the other day, he's got a real passion for it and just seeing him pivot. And, you know, he's, he's on the, uh, on the, the eve of his career and uh, now he's doing what he loves to do, which is fantastic. 
Um, yeah, I don't know if I'll ever get to the book thing. I guess never say never. I, I've been approached a few times, which is always interesting mm -hmm. because, you know, these marketing companies, they want to sell you on writing this book and all that. And, you know, we'll write it for you. You do 13 hours worth of interviews. We'll have somebody just interview you and then, you know, they'll write the thing. That's great. Okay. How much is that going to cost? It'll right. be X amount of thousands of dollars. Great. Okay. Then I got to self publish that too. Okay. So I literally like, it's going to cost me about 20 to 25 grand to put out a book that I don't think I'm ever going to get 25 grand worth of book sales. Uh, I'm just not that interesting in my opinion, but uh, it was very interesting to, to go through that process completely solicited by the way, it's happened like twice. Somebody wants me yeah. to write books. So weird. I do. I'm also, um, I try to make decisions, you know, based on what are the goals I've set for the year, mm -hmm. but then also, or like that word of the year, but also like if something feels like it's going to be work, like it's not coming from kind of a creative or restful place. Like if it just feels really strenuous, yeah. I don't force myself to do it then. I, you know, I mean, sure. I'm talking about work, but I'm talking about like these bigger projects, like taking yeah. on a book. I just felt like, I don't know how difficult this is going to be. And there were plenty of times that I just wanted to quit, but like, I, I just felt like I had the space for it last year. And so that's why I took it on, but no other year before that. And definitely not now. So I try to just take on those projects as it's like, I feel like I have the energy for this. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I, I can appreciate that. I'm in the same way. Like a year or two ago, I had, I had more time and yeah, that was a COVID thing too. You know, we, we were just around more, not traveling as much and, and doing it now it's like i'm super crazy busy and i've been invited a few times to speak at a couple conferences and i'm just like it's a great opportunity it's a huge honor i'd love to do it i can't I just don't yeah. have the time you know or i'm booked for something else you know right. it's, it's it's weird it's really weird to do it um so we're going to get ready to wind down here but before i do you touched on a, a couple of points i just want to end, end around and go back to you were talking about like non forensic accountants, uh, just regular private investigators, getting skill sets and, and knowing what to look for and, and kind of, you know, getting a skill out of this that's billable. So let's, let's drill on that a little bit. Yeah. Um, what in the book would be helpful for the regular PI and, you know, why should they be buying this book and, and reading it? Yeah. So um, really, I think any investigator should consider the data sleuth process for client intake and case planning, just the way that we define and describe that. But then in addition, understanding some of the simple best evidence sources that you can go to see was daughter stealing, you know, stealing from mom while she was the caregiver, that type of um, just, we kind of, they're just like these simple embezzlements where someone stole money or used money, not for the benefit of the person who owned the money. That's essentially what we're quantifying. Okay. And so by understanding these three data sources, you can like a bank statement, credit card statement, and payroll reports. I know I sound like a broken record about those three, right. but that those reports are where missing money is found. And so in the book, we talk about those data sources. We talk about how to digitize those right. data sources and put them into tables and why that's important, how to do that. And then just some really straightforward and simple ways to sort and filter and organize that information to find the things that are weird. Right. Because then once we found the transactions that look weird by using these tools, then we can interview people. Then we can do research. Then we can kind of take those next steps. And maybe at that point, the PI says, oh, I don't know enough about business records. I need to pull in a forensic accountant to help me or an accountant to help me. That's a good right. time yeah. to do that. Right. But all of those interviews, um, talking to people, it's so much more effective if you can have some of this data to back you up. Like, hey, Sally, <laughs> when you go to this no. interview, hey, Sally, can you tell me what these checks made out for $20,000 a pop or for? Like, what was this for? Why are these made out to you? Yeah. Anyone can find that. So, and so I just want to help empower 
Yeah, that's people that aren't accountants or quote unquote numbers people. This is how you find it. And it's really that simple. So I know what your answer would be to Kelly Paxton, right? Who, who's the, the bigger fraudster, the, the woman or the, the male? You just threw Sally under the bus. So <laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> I think mine are about 50-50, though. In my there cases. You go. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So all right. So we're gonna we're gonna wind down here. Um I encourage everyone, you know, go check it out. And um, you know, that that methodology, it, it it we cannot stress how important that is. You know, just finding a system that's gonna help you be the very best at what you do. Um, and, and no matter what type of investigative work you do, um, you know, having that mindset is, is what's going to take you to the next level. Um, so as this, uh, podcast is out, uh, the book should be out. Uh, we're going to put links to, uh, to everything in the show notes, um, links to the Leah's podcast and, um, you know, workman forensics and all that. Um, Leah, thank you so much for coming on. It was great having you, uh, on again. Uh, it's always a, a pleasure to, to chat with somebody who's, uh, who's living the dream. So, uh, congratulations on everything and, and keep it up. Yeah. Thank you so much, Matt. All right. Great. Thanks everyone for tuning in and we'll catch everybody next week on the next show. Thanks for coming on again, Leah. We wish you great success with the book. Folks, you should really consider getting a copy of this one, especially if you have an interest in forensic accounting or fraud examination, check out the show notes for a link. We'd also like to thank Crosstracks, IRB, Investigator Education Consultants, and OREP for sponsoring this show. Please support these great supporters. And now's a good time to join the Investigator's Toolbox. Get on board and join the fastest growing digital community for investigative professionals. Use code PIP201836 to save 10% on your membership when you join. If you have a question or a comment about the show, email Matt at Matthew S at SatellitePI.com. You can also find him on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. We'd like your feedback to bring you the best shows possible. And we'll be back next week with a new show. So make sure you tune in and stay safe out there.